So, good morning and welcome to the third panel of this second international um, conference uh, of Blurring the Lines, which focuses on uh, photography and education. I'm Steve Bisson and I'll be the moderator of this third panel. Um, with me, um, uh, let me introduce uh, the participants of this uh, third panel. Um, uh, they are all recent graduates from different schools uh, worldwide. Um, Riti Sengupta, uh, welcome from uh, graduate from National Institute of Design, Gandhi Nagar, India. Um, Marina Istomina from Doc Doc Doc School of Modern Photography, uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. And we have uh, Leif Polevik from uh, Lucas School of Arts in Brussels, Belgium, and Tolga Akbas from Mimar University, Istanbul, Turkey, uh, Zoe Slurs from IKV St. Jost Breda, the Netherlands, and um, Rafan Johnson of the School of Photography, Reykjavik, Iceland. So welcome board, thank you for being here and joining the works of the conference. So uh, we have a special topic for this third panel, um, uh, the idea is to uh, think uh, uh, and discuss about uh, the meaning of being an artist or being a photographer. Um, we all know that um, definition often had to make confusion. So we will try to challenge ourselves with this uh, um, topic. Um, and uh, let me add that uh, our practice today uh, as creatives, photographers, and image makers is informed by many issues, right? Uh, personal, first of all, uh, but also social, ethical, and not often these um, issues uh, uh, fit into the labels, right? Um, and it's very likely that our approach uh, to seeking in, and within seeking and expressing our own voice um, do overlap this type of boundaries, right? Um, and uh, I would also uh, like to add the fact that we are um, increasingly uh, witnessing um, uh, shared and collaborative practices within uh, photography and arts, which makes it more and more difficult again to think as, as an artist of photographers. Uh, however, as we discussed in the first panel of this morning, uh, we must communicate ourselves, right? We um, need to make our work, our works, uh, accessible, effectively accessible and understandable. And we need somehow to uh, position ourselves as well. Um, so this led us to questions like, um, for instance, uh, do we perceive ourselves as an artist or uh, is there any difference uh, in between being a photographer and an artist or does this difference make sense uh, in the country we live, in the region we inhabit? Um, and also is a difference in between our personal and our professional work. So um, these are the questions we will try to answer together. Um, and of course, we'll be receiving also some questions from our audience. Um, so as long as I receive them, I will turn them to you. Um, so feel free to jump into this very particular subject, which relates somehow to our identity as artists and photographers, how we perceive ourselves and how we would like to be perceived from the audience, from our clients, from our targets, our uh, audience. So, um, who is up to you to, to start then? I can start if you want. <laughs> oh, sure, Marina, go for it. Uh, so, uh, firstly, I think it depends uh, on the approach uh, and artistic photographer's statements. If you feel that you're a photographer 
and uh, photographer status is more convenient for you, you should use it. Um, so usually in my projects, uh, I use a kind of um, performative photography and I create my own uh, narrative um, with different types of images. There are archival images, staged photography, documentary, still lives, portraits. And in this case, um, I agree photography really exists in many ways, but I consider myself uh, an artist because it gives me freedom. Um, I don't have any limitations in technique, for example. Uh, I can show ideas in many ways uh, with many instruments and methodology. And also I can talk um, differently about a concept without being tied to a specific medium. Um, however, uh, when I finished my first project, I represented myself as a photographer. Uh, but one day I felt that um, I know how to do it, how to take the pictures. Uh, and I felt that it's not so easy for me, but I started to think like a scam uh, for the different issues or problems. And um, uh, I felt some fear maybe. And since that moment, I understood that I should find more forms, new forms, new aesthetics or methods um, to improve something inside my head. And, and uh, since that moment, I began to think firstly about uh, the idea and then how I can express it not only with photography. Um, I think it's about expansion of methodology maybe and approach to a specific story. Um, secondly, I, um, I uh, understand that it depends on the situation, because when I work um, with some organizations or when I want to get some access to bureaucratic structures uh, in Russia, <laughs> I represent myself as a photographer because it's more practical and maybe clear because they they these people who are not inside of this art area uh, they know what expect from you as photographer but um, with the artists it's not so clear yeah so i think yeah it's really depends on the situation so uh, it's interesting what you say, because it, it, it, it takes us to think about the fact that maybe compared to the past, we need to be much more flexible. Yeah. You know, according to the situation, to, to the people we are approaching, uh, uh, more and more we need to, to be um, flexible in a way, you know? And so uh, what about Leaf? What about your uh, experience in, in Brussels then? Although you are now studying again in Belgium in another school, I know. So um, tell us about your experience within school, for instance, how um, is, if this type of topic was an important um, in, your, in your background um, experience uh, at Lucas in Brussels and if it's becoming also uh, an issue, this uh, rethinking about your identity as, a, as an artist or a photographer in your school today. Yeah, uh, me, I was, uh, I did a bachelor first at Eusa Le 75, which is much more known for uh, documentary photography uh, and approach. So it's much, it was much more about the image. And then when I arrived in uh, Lucas School of Arts in a photography department also, uh, I was in contact with people who had a more artistic approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that uh, me, I was mo more considering myself as a photographer at that, at that time, but I still much more consider myself as a photographer, but still I have a photographic practice and identity, but also an artistic practice and an identity. So it's a kind of a mix where you have your own expression, uh, because uh, being a photographer is not necessarily uh, um, uh, limited into the the world the world of arts and uh, and culture and artists too. So so it's much more because photographer can be also in the information or on news. So 
I will much more consider myself uh, as a, someone who is a worker into the the arts and culture and by extension information uh, uh, context. Understand? And do, do you think it's not working that much now? <laughs> I cannot hear. You were in the school. I mean, um, in your school, you uh, were uh, somehow um, brought to think about, um, uh, forced somehow to think yourself as a documentary photographer, for instance, or like a, a type of uh, visual maker, or uh, were you trained also to, uh, to a more ex uh, experimental um, experience, so to try different mediums? How was your experience with this regard? Um, so there was a small uh, problem, connection problem when you asked the, your question at the beginning, but uh, so I don't know if I uh, hear well the beginning, but still. Um, uh, so I have a, a tool to, to work that is uh, my camera. And then, so I produce images and I make images and I was often oftenly asked, oh, what, what is your profession or your work? And I said, I make a photography. And people say, oh, what kind of photography? And I just say, oh, I make photography because uh, I can use um, my photographs uh, as a resource, as material resource to, to create things. I don't know, something like a, a book or, or something else. So uh, I see photography and, uh, and photographs I produce as a material resource that then can uh, uh, concretize the materials into something uh, concrete. For instance, okay, so, thanks. And I, I'm not uh, limited into photography. It's my medium for the moment. But uh, yeah, but uh, there's some people who are also uh, because in Luca, people were at the end in, in the photography department. We are talking about uh, lens-based artists. So bec because there were people working with video in photography department. So it was another uh, another dimension of the photography. Uh, ID. It really depends the context, the school, the country also. Of course, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, Zoe, what about your experience in the Netherlands and Breda? Uh, is this type of uh, um, identity uh, label somehow affected your journey in the school and how you envision, try to envision yourself as a young uh, visual maker? Yeah, definitely. It was interesting what you were saying, Leif, about um... Uh, well, the, the name of the, the course you're doing, which is then um, Lens-Based Artist. Uh, with us, it changed over the time. We studied photography and film for four years, and then just before we graduated, it was photography, film, and the digital. Um, and this is because people in our class, there were people in our class that didn't even touch the camera. We, they were just making installations or doing something completely digital without a camera. Um, which is very interesting. So people were doing very different stuff and we, most of us didn't feel very limited to the medium at all. Um, having said that, I do think I'm a photographer in the sense that I do use photography most of the time. Um, but when I got the question and when I got the email to um, contribute to this conversation, I immediately thought of my, the um, photographer I did my internship at, uh, Anne Gien van Doorn. She has on her website, it says, um, I'm a visual artist, but on documents and at parties, I call myself photographer. And I think that's such a great uh, introduction. Um, and it's the same as Marina was saying as well, um, that at certain moments, it's just easier to say that you're a photographer, but sometimes it can feel kind of limiting um, to just call yourself photographer. Um, especially now that I've graduated, I. Um, kind of figured out that right now I can play with clay again and do something completely different. Uh, last weekend, uh, I live with two of my former classmates uh, and we invited some uh, an artist over as well and we built uh, blanket forts all weekend and that was an art project. Um, and of course we documented this with cameras because we're comfortable with cameras um, and it's a great way to, to keep this fort alive uh, even when we take it down. Um, but it's very freeing to know that 
there's other ways to tell stories than just photography. Um, although I do feel really comfortable in telling stories through um, photography, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's interesting what you, uh, both you and Marina said about the fact that it's convenient somehow at some point to say that you're a photographer. Um, so it sounds like in a, in a, a commissioned world, it, it pays back a little bit more than say an artist. So um, I'm curious about um, then how do you uh, relate? This was an issue uh, we, we talked about this morning in the first panel about how the impact um, of uh, technologies, you know, how we not just relate to technology, but how we use technologies to shop our work and to show up our identity as well as, a, as artists or visual makers. So uh, I think this uh, um, question of um, technologies and models, new models of uh, distributing our photography, our images affect our, our work, our practice. So I'm asking turning the same question to you because I guess this is interesting here. Because do we turn ourselves out there as artists or as photographer? How do we show up? You know, how do you relate to this type of issues? Because at the end, this is part of the game, right? Uh, using these these techniques, these mediums, in our daily base. Yes, definitely. Especially when you look at social media and uh, where you contribute uh, or distribute. I mean. Um, the work that you make. Uh, I think sometimes it's, it's a pity that uh, a lot of images only end up on Instagram and, and they get seen on there. And um, I myself really love photography books and I really value the, the actual holding of an object and the story it can tell. And um, I think that's such a beautiful thing. And I think in the photography world, um, photo books are still very much loved. Um, but it's also interesting to look at different ways um, to, to show your work in digital ways as well. It's, it's inevitable that it's a part of our lives now. Um, so it's interesting to, to look at the ways you can uh, show your work uh, online or digital. Um, but I still, I, I really love photo books. So I would never, um, how do you say, I never forget about the books. Uh, yeah, they'll always be part of photography for me. Yeah, this is an interesting um, point, uh, that of the photo books, because again, sometimes I'm being a publisher myself, right? Uh, sometimes I uh, question myself, am I doing photo art books or I'm just doing photo books? So again, the definition is not that easy, the border of the definitions. Uh, we, but thinking about the words we use, I think it's a good exercise. That's what makes sense of this panel, I guess, that sometimes we use words without really questioning them very much. So I'm eager to hear what Riti uh, think about uh, herself uh, as a photographer or an artist and mostly also hear how this type of um, labeling or uh, identity issues uh, uh, works in her own country, uh, in India. Hi, so um, I think I identify very much as a photographer and a photographer who is also trying to make art because at the creative okay. day and day. Riti, uh, hold on. Can you just turn, try to turn a little bit uh, louder the, your voice? Just, just a little bit because I hear it a little bit low. Uh, am I audible now? Can you hear me clearer? Yeah, turn it up. I think <laughs> so everyone can hear you probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we a bit yeah it sounds a little bit better. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I identify myself very much as a photographer, but also as a photographer who is trying to make art as opposed to making only just images. Because how I look at photography is that everybody has access to a camera at the present age. So everybody can make a photograph. So as an artist, what more can I do with my images? How can I say more stories or inform people through my work? So that becomes important to me. 
I'm also at a phase in my journey where I have just begun my journey in photography. So I'm very open to experimenting and trying different things uh, with the medium itself. It is very fascinating uh, how photography allows for interactions with other different mediums, like for example, with text or with illustrations or sound. So when all these things come together, it feels just, it's not just photography anymore, it's, it's scope becomes bigger and it allows more people to also engage with it. So that is what I find interesting about the medium. And I think I'm always at a crossroad between being a photographer and being an artist and trying to think how the two definitions are always altered and how, how things are just, you know, like sometimes more leaning towards being a photographer or leaning more towards being an artist. So yeah, mostly this kind of thing. Uh... Thank you very much. Um, uh, what I find interesting, uh, one of the, th the things I find interesting, what you've just said, and I will turn it to the others uh, member of this panel because I think it's an interesting point. Um, you said that uh, a lot of people uh, today use photography, right, um, with different type of uh, tools like camera, tablets, phones, whatever. Um, so somehow, um, as many, many people can take pictures, let's say, uh, today, um, uh, do you feel that this is leading, um, uh, or have you ever had this type of thought, of course, uh, it's leading people to think themselves rather more as artists than photographers, because photographers, because everyone is photographer, basically. Um, that's like a, a pitfall of technology because broad uh, tools is like a democratiza democratization of the process, um, which has positive and negative side, of course, but somehow is like an inflated medium now. So have you have a thought uh, uh, uh, with regard to this distinction of being an artist and a photographer uh, uh, at yourself um, using uh, a medium that is very much popular in a way. Is this a problem for you? Is this uh, concern you somehow? It is sometimes a problem because we are saturated with visual information. Every day in the morning, we look at our phones and our generation is a very visual generation. We have access to a lot of visual material. So I think uh, maybe in the past, when we looked at an image, it had a certain impact on us. And nowadays, it's more difficult for an image to have the same kind of impact. So your image has to have something more to make uh, that kind of a lasting impact on a person because you're always looking at images. So yes, this makes the work more challenging for photographers or artists because we have to somehow demarcate ourselves from the vast image making which is always happening uh, but it's also interesting because i think uh, for any medium of art and photography is perhaps a comparatively more uh, new medium uh, as compared to maybe painting or other mediums so for any medium to develop i think it's good to have more people engage with it and that is how to ups and downs it takes a certain form over time so i think it's both uh, good and bad, like it has both its positive and negative. Right, right, right. Of course, this this type of a uh, question um, are meant to you know uh, help us to uh, think about the issues. Uh, most of these questions they don't have uh, a specific answer, a definitive answer. The good thing is about um, uh, listening. It's about listening to the possible perspective. Uh, that exists around the issues. Um, we haven't heard Tolga yet. Um, so um, Tolga, would you like to bring your own perspective through um, Atis? Atis is helping you with the translation. Kendi görüşünü söylemek ister misin Tolga dedi? Seni hiç duyamadık dedi. Evet, beni hiç duyamadınız. Sanatla ilgili görüşümü soruyor değil mi? Sanat ve fotoğraf konuştuğumuz Aynen öyle. Aynen öyle. Evet, şöyle diyelim o zaman. Ben kendimi sanatçı...
Duyamadık. Umut Yap. Şu an geliyor mu sesim? Evet. Ee, ben şu an tekrar gitti. Peki. Ya kendi kendine kapanıyor. Bu nasıl yapacağız bunu? Bilmiyorum. Şu an geliyor ses. Şu an geliyor mu? Evet. Otomatik kapanıyor. Kendimi sanatçı ve fotoğrafçı olarak görmüyorum. Daha çok bir flanör olarak görüyorum kendimi. Şehirde aylak aylak geziyorum. İstersen burasını çevir. Tamam. I do not uh, define define myself as a photographer or artist. I'm a uh, walking around in the city and taking photographs. Yani e, bunun dışında bir sanatçı olmak etik, etik, etiketiyle ilgili bir şey sormuşlar. Ondan da bahsedeyim. Yani bu etiketin olumsuz etkileri olduğunu düşünüyorum. Yani sanatçı etiketinin olumsuz bir etkisi olduğunu düşünüyorum. Çünkü sanatçı etiketiyle beraber bir takım egolar da beraberinde geliyor. Çevirebilirsin. Uh, I do not like uh, tag tag as an artist because uh, if you tag as an artist Uh, it uh, comes with an ego, uh, ego problems with it. Bunun dışında Türkiye'de sanatçı olmanın e, bir fark yaratıyor mu ülkenizde diye bir soru var. Ona da cevap vereyim. E, evet yani dediğim gibi sanatçı olmak bir takım egolar getiriyor ve bence üretim e, sürecini kısıtlıyor. Ben bu yüzden kendimi bir sanatçı olarak görmüyorum. Daha çok dediğim gibi flanör gibi şehirde aylak aylak geziyorum. Çevremi gözlüyorum. Projelerim de zaten e, bu yüzden çok yavaş ilerliyor. Çok uzun süreçler anlatıyorum. Ateş. Uh, ben arti, uh, as I said uh, before, being an artist, tagged an artist is uh, comes with difficulties and ego problems. I think so. Uh, I uh, do not want that tag on me. Actually, like I said before, I want to just walk around in the city and decide my projects as photographer or artist. It's uh, not important for me as a Being an Artı bir şey daha söyleyeceğim. Ben okula başlamadan önce daha çok fotoğraf çekiyordum. Ama okula başladıktan sonra fotoğraf makinesini elimden bırakıp daha çok dışarıdaki gözlere, işte bu güvenlik kamerası olabilir, bir herhangi bir televizyon görüntüsü olabilir, onlara yöneldim. Çok uzun süreden beri de hiç elime fotoğraf makinesi alıp fotoğraf çekmiyorum. I want to say this... Before I started to uh, art school, fine art school, I uh, doing lots of photography jobs and taking lots of photography. But after the start of the school, I dropped my camera and uh, go on thinking like uh, different, not like a uh, photographer uh, as it is. Şimdilik bu kadar Ateş. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tolga, for sharing with us your um, ideas. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think we we all we all uh, are concerned with the fact that labels are not very nice, indeed. You know, we we are uh, of course we have all our own identity, and often, as I mentioned at the very start of the panel, this um, uh, our perspective, our practice, all, always. Uh, uh, overlap these boundaries, you know, um, and go all beyond the boundaries. So I totally understand to your position. What, what is important is maybe that when we have to um, get our work out there and get our work to an audience, uh, both being a photographer, an artist, then we need to be um, accessible in a way. And then becomes the problem, how we want to be perceived. That's, And that led us to that question we, we made before about uh, how should we use the medium, the technologies we have to, to bring our work out there to an audience. Um, but again, there is no definitive answer. And um, we have a few more minutes uh, before uh, finishing. Not sure I'm seeing, I'll see if we can get some questions. But meanwhile, um, Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts about um, how um, um, 
this issue, uh, this topic um, should impact within schools, right? Um, uh, as this morning we talk uh, about the fact that um, often the topic of how using uh, technologies is, um, is not part of the curricula, let's say. And likewise, I would like to ask you if you think that this type of um, questions, uh, issues should be uh, more included uh, in the schools um, or not. That's my, my question. Excuse me, this question for Tolga? It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Okay. Tolga as well, right? Well, I can I can contribute a little bit. Um, I think in in the the studies I did, um, we were relatively free in in um, what kind of medium we wanted to use. Um, and what we wanted to call ourselves, but we were pushed in a way to um, to have a title, to to um, uh, how do you say it? To present yourself as or a photographer or a, a filmmaker or someone in between, but ha have a label to it. Um, and I think it's it's it's a very interesting question. Whether it's I don't know if I have the answer to how education in art should be done. Um, not at all. Um, yeah, it's interesting that uh, after graduating, I finally kind of felt that I could do completely different things to photography. Although in our school, it was very much promoted to try different things. In the first uh, half year of our studies, you don't even study a specific course. You try everything for a little while and then you choose what you want to do. And even in that situation, you can still kind of switch. So I believe we were kind of um, brought up to be artists anyway, uh, to be kind of free in the medium you want to use and um, yeah, use them as, as fits to the project you're doing. Um, but still you were made to choose a label, which is fair enough because you want to present yourself to the world and you're gonna have to have a name for yourself. Uh, so it's fair to have a label, I guess, but sometimes it, it's difficult because it feels like you're stuck with that label, which is, of course, not true. Um, but yeah, it's interesting for myself. I I felt for the first time after, after graduating um, to be com completely free again, to be able to start my whole um, reflection. Uh, at who am I? What, what do I want to make? Do I have to be a photographer? Do I want to be a photographer? Do I want to be an artist? So I think it's an interesting time for me or for anyone who just graduated to like uh, revisit that thought of who am I and who do I want to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I think we, we are free to change uh, within our path, our journey. And that's why these labels are very difficult and, and heavy and heavy because we have uh, room and time enough to change, to become a photographer and then an artist and then turn back to photographer. I think that uh, we have to think this way. Um, of course, schools need to, to deal with both, both um, issues. So prepare uh, students to, uh, and to understand what being a documentary photographer, for instance, is, or an architectural photographer is. And at the same time, yes, they have to leave the freedom as in your first year, Zui, um, to, to, to test, to experiment. Uh, but after graduation, then it's, it's, it's a new school, it's the life school, and then it becomes, uh, uh, as you said, there is, uh, there is more freedom, even more, paradoxically, than school to, to try things. Uh, Marina, what about in, in school in St. Petersburg at uh, Doc, Doc, Doc, you know, uh, we know because uh, Doc, Doc, Doc have been part of the, the network for a couple of years now and I know that the, um, we have seen different works, graduation works coming from your school and, and there is a strong documentary approach, I would say, uh, and how did you then uh, instead perceive your, your journey, your experience in this specific school? Uh, 
Yeah, but now Dr. Doc has uh, two directions, documentary photography and experiences in contemporary photography. So uh, I graduated uh, the second one. That's why uh, I think uh, we are also free to choose our uh, our statues, we are an, uh, the artists or uh, photojournalists or photographers. Um, that's why yeah, I appreciate uh, it, uh, the situation that we can choose, of course. Um, so I think we are free and, um, and yeah. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Um, Liv, I, I saw you raise your hands. Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, yeah because also uh, schools are a place to mean, a uh, place to learn also. Uh, some, uh, uh, um, um, ah, shit, I just forgot the word in my two languages. That's just this. <laughs> yeah, to, to learn a discipline. And, um, but it's also some place when you can experience. Um, I don't know, for instance, a, a certain politicization. I know in France, uh, people also in public school or university, people uh, experience a uh, political experience. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's about freedom also. And when we, when we don't have this freedom, for instance, with the new law that getting vote in France that forbid uh, to occupy school and can be punished by three years of prison and to defuse also police officers in duty and police officers in duty can carry on their, their guns into theater, museum. Uh, outside the school, you can naturally make anything. So for photographers, reporters, journalists, but also for workers of the arts and culture, it can be a danger when you uh, take the right, because as workers, we also have rights to represent what we want uh, and to express. So it really depends the country you are in also. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for sharing this. Um, this has been a point highlighted in the, in the previous two panels as well, how the, uh, the huge differences that we uh, do face in our so-called globalized world, right? Um, so, and I think what we are trying with, with this uh, conference, but moreover with um, this Blurring the Lines project is to gather pers different perspectives from different countries every year. Um, because what you just pointed out is certainly crucial because we, there is no mainstream uh, argument. Uh, the argument change with local uh, circumstances always and it's never the same. It change. It change with time, as we do change with time. So yeah, definitely, um, there are more and more restrictions out there uh, around the fact of taking pictures. It's not just about friends. Um, so this is an issue. This is an issue. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe it would be nice, for instance, to to hear us what Riti or Tolga have to, to, to, to say about uh, bringing experience from their own country uh, that um, we don't often hear about, um, at least in our um, small perspective of Europeans. Not sure if you wanna add something, feel free of course. I think in India, uh, there are very few photo schools for students to go to and study as compared to Europe or our Western counterparts. Um, there is also a lot of very good photographers who are self-taught. So always uh, a balance of university educated photographers and self-taught photographers, and not necessarily always a difference in their process of working. Sometimes it can also be very similar. Uh, I studied photography in a design school, uh, not really an art school, so again, that for me added one more layer of complexity because with design, I always thought that design is something you make for the other. And with photography, the need to turn the lens inwards as much as outwards. So these labels of, I was for the longest time very confused as to whether I was being educated to become a photographer or a designer or an artist. 
And after a point, it really didn't matter because what mattered is that I had something to say and photography served as a way for me to say it because what, what, when words didn't come to me and things seemed complex, I was able to make an image of it. So I think uh, when, when as young graduates, we go to school more than thinking of whether we're making an image as a photographer or artist, as designer, it is more important to make that image and to know whom that image is for, what do you want to say through that image and things like that, you know. So I think uh, educational institutes, I think I very much agree with Zoe that I do not think there is uh, any right or wrong way to teach art or if art can at all be taught to somebody. But I think um, what art does help one do is ask questions, critical questions. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you are answering them as a photographer or an artist, as long as you're learning how to answer them in some way. Uh, definitely. Um, um, I see the, uh, a question here, um, which um, maybe will help us to focus on the last um, uh, perspective uh, of this topic. And is asking, it's actually is a statement, it's not a question, it's saying that if to become uh, an architectural photographer, uh, you surely need a strong background in architecture. So let me reframe this statement and make it uh, maybe more uh, general for everybody. Um, of course, um, I think uh, that more and more in the future, like if we want to be a landscape photographer as much as an architectural photographer or um, even a documentary photographer, more and more we will need uh, to dialogue or be aware of a need of a dialogue with other disciplines. This was also highlighted in the previous panel with Lisanne Pahappen uh, around social and environmental awareness. If you want to tell a good story about environment or social issues, we firstly need to understand and, and being aware about what we're talking about, right? And not often, as for example, of architecture photographer, which is like a, a niche of photography, um, we have the skills and the knowledge we need to do that. That's why the, provo the pro very provocative statements say, okay, if you want to be an architectural photographer, maybe you need an architectural background, uh, which makes sense in a way, and tell us that probably, um, especially if we want to be a photographer rather than an artist, but not just, it's not anymore like that. Before, there are many artists that are like activists that are concerned with real issues and they feel they need, they have to expand their knowledge. So my question, my last question to you, do you ever felt the need to expand your knowledge beyond the fact of being a photographer or an artist then? Uh, if I can... Uh, yeah, answer. sure. Everybody. Um, yeah, I think of course, of course, if you do a project, uh, you dive into the material that you're talking about or, or telling a story about. I don't think to take architectural pictures, you need to be an architect or for or any other example. Um, but of course, you do your research. And you, when you talk about something, you want to um, you want to be sure that you're telling a story based on facts and on um, and on truth. But I do think it's I think if, if we're talking about architectural pictures, I think someone if, if an architect will take pictures of a building those images will be very different to an artist taking pictures of a building and that's super interesting and i don't think one is better than the other um it will just be different and it's um yeah it's i think it again it depends on how you uh, distribute those images um and what they're used for if they're used in an architectural magazine maybe it's better to um, have an architect take the pictures with an artistic eye or something. Um, but if it's meant to be art, it could be way more interesting to have an artist that knows a little bit about um, uh, architecture to take the pictures because they just cause they look differently at the building or at whatever they're taking pictures of. So I don't think there's again, I don't think there's a right or wrong in this. Um, but yeah, there's there's a difference, of course, yeah. Anyone else uh, that would like to add anything to this um, need of understanding 
situations in a much broader way that takes us to be able to listen and dialogue with other disciplines. Uh, if you have had an experience in this direction, I think it's about that. I think it's about the fact that both the photographer and the artist would then need much more in the future uh, and the ability, the skill to listen and be able to dialogue with other disciplines, much more than in the past, right? I think that it's really important to be in dialogue. And I think uh, um, it is more about cultural awareness and it's important for a photographer and also for an artist. Uh, and um, if you're, you're doing a great research, you, are, you have some additional forces to do something, to be in, uh, an inspiration, to create something more complex. Uh, that's why I think that it's really important to be attentive to this world in general. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Uh, anyone else would like to conclude or say something else about this issue? Other ideas, other things? Ateş, ben bir şey söyleyeceğim. Orada evet, evet. Evet. Ee, Şimdi şöyle söyleyeyim, disiplinler arası çalışmak şart ama bilinen e, disiplinler dışında başka şeyler de gerekiyor artık günümüzde. Mesela ben son zamanlarda yazılım ve donanım bilgisinin zayıflığı ile ilgili çok büyük problemler yaşıyorum. Bunu söyleyebilirsin. Uh, of course you have to uh, work interdisciplinary in today's world, but uh, also uh, you have to know software in our uh, society, software and uh, tech. Actually. Artı şöyle de bir, e, bir şey var. Yani sanat okulları belki de liseden sonra geçilecek okullar değil, e, bir eğitimin üzerine alınacak okullar olsa daha yararlı ve üretime daha katkısı olacağını düşünüyorum. Yani atıyorum öncelikle mühendislik eğitiminin üzerine e, işte güzel sanatlar, fotoğraf, heykel, resim neyse gibi. Uh, I think uh, fine arts uh, studies have to be after some other uh, disciplinary works, disciplinary education, like uh, engineering uh, or anything else. Uh, after the high school, uh, if you start uh, uh, educating as a fine arts students, it's not... Uh, Enough, I think. That's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, Tolga. Um, what you just uh, highlighted, uh, Tolga, is uh, especially the, the intrusive power of technology is actually going to be um, part of my uh, speech tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to focus specifically on how technologies are affecting the scenario in which we move today as photographers or image makers. So um, I definitely agree with that uh, concern. Um, not sure if you have, I see a last question here from the audience. Say, if you are graduated from photography, what will be the difference between visual artists and a lens-based artist. Oh, and this is becoming more and more tougher. Uh, I think, I think. Well, feel free to answer. But I got what? What? What's the difference uh, between being a visual artist or a lens-based artist? I think it's a matter of uh, wording, probably. Um, um, I think this type of question is, is what actually should lead us to think about our vocabulary. And uh, about uh, and that's always a good exercise, like etymology, rethinking about uh, the words we use. Um, I think this type of definition that is like a good exercise, but they don't have to become heavy labels on us. That's I think is the basic message uh, um, I have to I have as an answer to this question. But I don't know if you have other. Um, position with regard to this difference in, between visual artists and lens-based artists. 
of course, visual is a little bit broader, right? And you don't, you are not constrained in with length, basically. But um, maybe it's too easy like that. If you don't, I will. I don't I... want to be the, the first one to answer again, but. Um... <laughs> Very shortly, I think every lens-based artist is a visual artist, but not every visual artist is a lens-based artist. Like you said, maybe it's too easy to think like that, but um, a visual artist is it's more of a broad term. I think it's like exactly like you said, it's just wording um, is way more of a broader term. And a lens-based artist might be uh, restricted to the lens. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I think, at least. <laughs> yeah uh yeah i agree i agree i totally agree with you um it's it's but it's still it's still playful to <laughs> joke with words um and that's you know as you as you said before you started out with a course and ended up with other words at the end uh, after a few years so um so uh, we are over time so i please um i would like to say thank you for contributing to the panel um, please keep in touch with us. Uh, we are eager to learn more about your future and what you will be doing now that you're done with the graduate, uh, with, your, with your degree. Um, let me invite you, uh, you all and audience included, to uh, our next panel, which will now happen in the afternoon um, at 5, again with Lisanne Van Happen. So feel free to join for us for the next panel. And thank you all for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. And bye.